David Burroughs is here from Barometer. We're talking about North American large caps, and we're back to Vancouver for Mark. Hey, Mark. Yeah, I'd like to ask about Citigroup. Mm -hmm. um, I heard from an independent financial uh, source, quite reliable, I might add. Citigroup was named, uh, along with two other banks, the two other banks are in Europe, so we won't mention them, but Citigroup, um, they are struggling to survive on a daily basis, like they're scrambling daily. But it's not quite that simple. Apparently, their balance sheets are structured like Enron, like Greece, like it's hidden. It won't be evident until it finally collapses that their huge, massive leverage derivatives are hidden away, but they're struggling to survive. Does your guest know anything about that? Well, Mark, I, I, I have seen no evidence whatsoever of that. Uh, so I, I don't know which reliable source you're getting that from. Uh, we own Citigroup. Uh, we don't see that kind of problem with their balance sheet. Uh, we own it because it gives us very good exposure to global financial services. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got a great franchise. I think they've been under tremendous scrutiny over the last few years. Uh, uh, the U.S. banks dealt with their problems, I believe, quite effectively uh, in recapitalizing and uh, they traded a significant discount to the Canadian banks and I think that they are generally getting better. So uh, maybe your friend knows something that we don't know, but uh, we've seen no evidence of that. Why do you own Citigroup? We own Citigroup because it gives us the, the global exposure through a bank that is regulated in the U.S., uh, is well capitalized and is in a position to take market share from other global banks who have not recapitalized. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the European banks, I think, have done a less favorable job at restructuring. And so Citigroup probably has an opportunity to take market share. Mark, thank you for that. We go from Vancouver to Port Alberni. Vera, hello. Oh, uh, good morning. Good day. My concern is Callaway Reed. Mm -hmm. Is there an answer to why the shares have dropped 4 to $5 in the last few weeks? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vera, um, there's a few things contributing here. Um, the reason that we exited the retail REITs in Canada, uh, this would be early winter, was because the Canadian consumer seems to be slowing a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Second thing is you've got a sector headwind. REITs in general have had lower dividend growth than other income producing sectors. They were growing their distributions at about 5%. There are other areas like energy infrastructure that were probably a little bit better protected. So they became a source of cash for investors. Uh, the third thing is that they are Canadian focused and there's a lot of international investors stepping away from Canada, moving money more specifically to the U.S. So I think that Callaway is well managed. I think that they've got good assets. I think it's just a relative value decision that investors are making. And it's not specific to Callaway because the entire REIT sector is under pressure. Mm -hmm. And you really have to be focused in those that have something near term as a catalyst to, to create new value. Vera, thank you for joining us there. We're off uh, to Hamilton now for Louisa. Hello, Louisa. Hi there. Hi. Uh, my question for David is this. Um, I purchased Dundee International in a tax-free savings account. I purchased it at a higher price, and it's now gone down. And I know um, that I should be selling it, but I have both emotional <laughs> problems selling it and um, and the fact that I will lose that capital in that tax-free account. What do I do? Right. So, Louisa, and this is, I don't mean to sound harsh, it's worth what it's worth today. It's not worth what you paid for it. So you always have to look at your investments that way. What I have found is useful is when we make an investment, in every one that we make, we identify a price below the price we've paid where we're going to sell it if it doesn't work. Because lots of our investments don't work out. You know, This is why we have portfolios, not single shot positions. Um, I think that what you have to consider is, are there places that I could take does not, that number of dollars and invest it today that will give me a higher odds of success? And I think that there are other places than Dundee REIT currently. So uh, it's a tough emotional step to get over, but I would say, you know, we moved from REITs to financials. The financials benefit in a rising rate environment and a little bit better economy. Uh, the REITs are a little bit challenged because their financing costs go up. I think that you're better to make that move, but, but you always have to build some rules. We run money based on rules, not emotion. And that's, so that's $30 she's got locked in somewhere that she can't deploy elsewhere is what you're saying. That's exactly right. We're in a decent market. <laughs> You know, there are, there are lots of things that are working. Uh, you can't get caught 
thinking I'm right, the market's wrong. Louisa, thank you for that. Let's squeeze in one more call before the market call minute. Dan in London, last word to you, sir. Hi, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, question for David. <clears throat> I owned CAE for a number of years. I bought it quite low, actually, around $6. And I had a good run up to about uh, March of 2011. Mm -hmm. There was a rumor of a, of a takeover at that time. It didn't happen. It dropped down to 9 and it started to creep up again. My question to you, David, is that is there any truth of that rumor that they may be acquired by some company? Well, uh, Dan, look, any company can get acquired at any time. Uh, why, why would I like CAE and why do I like CAE? CAE is in the sweet spot right now in the market. One of the biggest sector themes is companies in the aerospace industry pr selling into the replacement of all of the jets that are taking place. CAE is the dominant player in simulators. I think you buy this for the fundamental value in the company. They are selling a lot of simulation systems uh, and uh, they'll continue to. Uh, we like the sector. You can play the sector owning companies like CAE. You can buy the sector owning Boeing. You can buy the sector owning the ETF IAT, uh, which is a great way to get exposure to this sector. I think you have to say, does it get taken over? Well, that would be a bonus mm -hmm. uh, if it came at the right price. But I think you buy it for the sector exposure and for their operational capabilities. Did you say IAT? I IAT in the U.S. is the re regional banks. ETF. Oh, I'm sorry. ITA. ITA in New York is uh, the winner. Uh, $90.78 right now. Reasonable entry point, you say? Yeah, reasonable entry point. Very steady performance. This is a simple, silly rule. Mm -hmm. Technically speaking, stock that trades through 90 has a very, very high 9 out of 10 chance it goes to 100. <laughs> Time now for the market call minute. Don't ask me why. All right, for Louise in Kitchener, Ontario, Shoppers Drug Mart, buy, sell, or hold? Consumer sector we like, shoppers we like, I'd be a buyer. Do you own it? We own it. For Dan at Edmonton, do you own uh, Altagas? Uh, we own it. Uh, we have reduced the position somewhat just on a sector basis. We like the company. Great uh, source of new revenues going forward. For Mariana in Mississauga, Agrium, is it a buy, sell, or hold? Don't like the agriculture sector. Grains are weak. Uh, fertilizer use is is, uh, is under a little bit of pressure. Does that go for potash as well for Henry Medicine Hat? Potash as well. Okay, Henry. Uh, let's go to Paul in Toronto. Uh, via the mailbox, he wanted your opinion on Anheuser-Busch. Do you buy the bud? Great dividend growth story. 49% market share globally. Uh, play on the global consumer. Do you own it? Uh, we do not own it. We own others. Uh, what about Manulife for Bill? We own Manulife. Uh, great beneficiary of higher interest rates uh, and uh, stronger investment portfolio. All right, thank you for your calls. Your emails and the tweets too are taking a short break. When we come back, it's the top picks.